Good evening, Mono County. Thank you for attending our COVID community conversation for July 23rd, 2020. My name is Brian Wheeler and I'm from Mono County Public Health. Tonight I will be joined by officials from the County of Mono, the Town of Mammoth Lakes, and Mammoth Hospital. So many things have changed since we've last been on um, and there's a lot of topics to cover tonight. So we're gonna get right into it. I'm gonna turn the presentation over to Stu Brown. Stu. Thank you, Brian. Um, good evening, everybody. We are back um, after a little hiatus with our presentation. So we're gonna do things a little bit differently this evening. We have uh, some slides that we wanna to present to the community. Uh, and then we'll also have our presenters speak to those slides. So I'm gonna kick things off uh, we'll have Dr. Boo kind of walk through the latest case statistics. Uh, Town Manager Dan Holler is going to kind of walk through the latest action that the Emergency Operations Centre has taken. Uh, Dr. Burrows will speak to a little bit of the uh, Mammoth Hospital, the current patient, uh, and then it'll revert back to me and I'll kind of wrap it up and then we'll uh, open it up for questions and try and have as much time as we can uh, for questions and answers. So. First slide today is, you know, we're all in this together. Um, you know, literally we have a shared responsibility um, to do the right thing, to, you know, wear our mask, uh, to protect um, our, our physical distancing uh, and hygiene. You know, we're all in this together. It's a kind of a county-wide, town-wide, nationwide, global effort to control the pandemic. As I said, we'll walk through the case statistics. We have our path forward, and then we'll finish with a community update. So stay safe to stay open is our ongoing um, hashtag campaign. And that is really to make sure uh, we can control, uh, protect each other uh, and to keep our local businesses open. Again, we wanna make sure that face covers uh, are being worn throughout the community and our public, uh, particularly indoors uh, where we see uh, most of the, the concerns uh, and most of the, uh, the cases. Uh, outside, face covers are required if you cannot maintain a six foot distance. Um, again, I want to remind the community that no gatherings of any size are permitted. Uh, we believe these modest gatherings of family and friends from different households um, are having effect on increasing transmission. So again, stay safe to stay open. When you see this um, sign, when you see this in our social campaigns, uh, please do your best to adhere to wearing a face covering, maintain your social distancing, wash and stay home if you're ill. Again, the uh, state on June 18th uh, issued guidance mandating the use of cloth face coverings. And then on May 1st, uh, Mona County Public Health Officer Dr. Boo issued the same order. So again, we wanna make sure everybody is adhering to the uh, face covering order throughout, not only the state, but in Mona County. With that, uh, if Dr. Boo is on, I'll hand it off to Dr. Boo to walk through the latest uh, case statistics. Yeah, hey, good evening everyone. Uh, thank you, Stuart. Um, yeah, so, um, you know, basically uh, we're over a hundred cases now um, as of today. And uh, in, um, you know, the, uh, the first second week of July, we started to see, um, you know, a significant increase after things stayed quite flat um, for several months during the, uh, you know, the more complete uh, stay-at-home period. Um, what you see here is is a graph. Um, hard for me to see it on my phone, but I don't think it includes. Well, I guess it has been updated. The, the version I saw stopped on the 20th. But yeah, you you see that the uh, the, the number of cases is increasing very rapidly. Um, in, in recent days, it's it's almost looking vertical. And um, th this is just uh, looking at it uh, by week. And, and again, this is just through the 19th. We've had uh, um, similar similar numbers so far this week, and then the week's not over yet. Um, but uh, again, you can see that, uh, um, you know, in, in, in early July, um, things started to change. So, so um, sorry, um, back back one. Sorry, Stuart. Um, yeah. So, so this slide um, graphs um, something called percent positives by week, and this is something that the state looks at, and and, and, and we follow. But this this just means that of all the tests that are that are uh, performed during that week, um, how many of them, what percentage of them, um, turn positive, and um, the uh, um, 
uh, again, you see the inflection point, the same inflection point, but we were, you know, we were under 1% for, you know, for, uh, you know, much of uh, April, May um, and, and June. And then, uh, you know, suddenly uh, the percentage of tests that are turning positive um, is increasing dramatically. Um, you know, most recently over 11%. And, and uh, so far this week, I'm, we seem to be uh, even, even higher than that. And, and um, this is one of the things that, uh, that uh, gets us on the state's monitoring list, which, uh, uh, you know, we're talking uh, more about tonight. But, uh, it, you know, the, um, so, so you could show the next slide if you want to. Okay, um, and, and so this is just um, a way of looking at the overall rate of, of COVID-19 cases um, in a population over the last two weeks or 14 days. Um, which is another metric, um, another statistic that uh, that the state follows that has put Mono County on the on the state's watch list or monitoring list. Um, you know, I don't, you, if you can see that red arrow pointing to a line of 100, that's 100 cases per 100,000 population. You know, obviously we don't have 100,000 people in in Mono County, so you have to uh, take that into account with a little bit of math. But um, for the 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 bar graph in the middle, the bar in the middle is for Mono County as a whole. And, and we're at about 250, just under 250, I think. Well, I guess it's, you know, MS has been updated to include the other cases of yesterday and today. And um, we're up uh, closer to 300 um, cases per 100,000. So we're, so we're two and a half to, to, to three times um, the, the rate that the state uh, considers um, reasonable. And then um, the other two graphs, the one on the left, the other two bars, um, is, is for Town of Mammoth Lake, which continues to be our epicenter with uh, over 95% of the county's cases. And, and then the, the, the much, much smaller um, bar to the far right um, is, is the, uh, the rate in, in Mono County outside the, uh, the area that we define as uh, um, Mammoth Lakes and, and the surrounding area, you know, where it's uh, just above um, 50 per 100,000. And, and um, I believe we have, have still just four cases outside the town of Mammoth Lakes, but with a population of, you know, 6,000 something, um, that, you know, that works out to, uh, you know, a still significant rate of uh, 52 per, per 100,000. And we did just double on um, the number of cases um, by, you know, if we have four, we had two and now we have four. So we doubled the, the number of cases within the last four or five days. Next slide, Steve. Yeah, and, and so um, this, this slide is just, um, you know, um, um, to talk about the, uh, the implications, you know, what this means. Um, you know, obviously it's not uh, good to, you know, have uh, dramatically increasing uh, rates of the pandemic virus. But, uh, you know, clearly if you look at the graphs and the way, you know, the way the, you know, all of a sudden the, the, the graphs are shooting skyward, transmission is accelerating rapidly. Um, and and uh, County Mammoth Lakes is, is still the biggest problem area. We, we don't have as much data, frankly, for, 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 the, for some of the areas outside of, of, of uh, the Town of Mammoth Lakes. So there's not as much testing. Um, there, there's not as much health care. Um, you know, some, some people access health care in, in Northern Nevada. We do get uh, report, you know, reports back on all positives, and, and, and we're trying to figure out whether we get the reports back on, the, on all the negative um, COVID-19 testing done up there, but, uh, but just the point that we uh, don't have as much um, data, as much testing um, in the population up there, so we don't have as much uh, sense of, 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 you know, what really might be going on. Um, because I, I do feel like uh, it, it's kind of just a matter of time. I mean, the, uh, you know, the epidemics, epidemics is accelerating, um, you know, pretty much everywhere all around us. Um, in your county still still pretty pretty flat and stable in, in northern Mono County but uh, you know northern Nevada and, and Southern California and the rest of California um, it's, uh, it's it's getting pretty bad so so I think it's just uh, uh, some lag time there um, and uh, covered uh, most of these other things and and, and so um, to, 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 to begin to talk a little bit more about uh, what it means to you know um, earn ourselves a, a sad spot on, on the uh, state's monitoring list or watch list. Um, 
what that means is, you know, well over 90% of, of the state's population is, is now on the watch list. I, I don't know the exact number of counties. It was 33 counties or something like that. The, um, you know, a few days ago, it's more than that now. But we 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 went on the on the on the state's website. It's been on the monitoring list today. Um, but uh, there will be some additional restrictions that that affect uh, some sectors that go into effect on Sunday. Um, there's sort of a you know there's a there's a a process of a few days, you know, when you go on the monitoring list and you have to stay on it for three days, you know, before the restrictions go into effect. But, it, um, it, you know, and there's, there's, there's a, a, a longer list of, of, of sectors and things that, that uh, you know, have to stop indoor activities um, and, and when possible, in some cases, um, shift outdoors. Um, but, but, but for purposes of what's relevant in, in, in Mono County, um, Hair, um, personal services, um, you know, have to have to cease operations. Um, Haircutting, barber shops and salons are, are the only one of the personal services uh, that are currently allowed that are um, given the option by the state of of shifting their activities outside. So they, you know, if uh, yeah, and there is guidance on the state website. So you know, so 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 barbers and and, and, and you know hairstylists who. Uh, you know, are, are able um, to continue working outside, um, can, can check the, uh, the state website for, for guidance on how to do that. Customers aren't supposed to enter the business. Um, and, and, you know, if, and if you have, uh, you know, a tent or a shade, it's got to be open, I think, on at least three sides because, uh, you know, you want to maximize airflow. Um, religious services um, indoors are, are no longer going to be allowed after 12 noon on on Sunday, so we'll have to shift services back outside or continue uh, virtual or um, you know Zoom, Zoom type church services um, and, until further notice. And uh, and gyms are affected too, um, gyms and museums. And so I you know I I heard from uh, from Snow Creek and Mammoth that they're actually shifting some weightlifting stuff outside, and that sounds sounds fine to me. You know, and tennis courts and and and, and swimming pools that are outdoors, those are still okay, um, but. Uh, um, indoor indoor gymnasium, yeah, you know, gyms um, are, are um, have to have to stop, and then museums, you know, um, you know, I don't know what to what extent there are outdoor um, museums um, around, but uh, you know, museums have, are under the same uh, the same orders as of as of Sunday, so uh, kind of a uh, depressing situation that we're you know um, moving backwards in in, in some ways, um, but. Uh, um, it's a serious situation. The hospital continues to uh, function uh, normally and well. There's 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 been one patient in there for a number of days uh, with, with uh, COVID-19, and uh, that person is is uh, said to be uh, improving, um, doing doing well at this point, um, but still hospitalized. But uh, overall, the impact on the hospital, the increasing um, cases, has not yet been seen. So um, maybe uh, Stu, should I hand it back over to you? Yeah, we're just going to have the town manager just briefly uh, walk through the um, latest public health order regarding current restaurants in the town of Mammoth Lakes. Yes, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Stu. Dan Holder, town manager for uh, Mammoth Lakes. Uh, a lot of uh, interesting questions and comments regarding uh, moving forward with some specific orders related to restaurants within the town of Mammoth Lakes. It does not apply countywide just to the town. Uh, this came out of some uh, cases that were popping up, positive cases. And um, if you go back to, I think it's early June or so and go forward up until it's probably uh, even more so than it was, but today, uh, 65 plus percent of our cases that were positive were being related back to restaurants or associated with uh, activities in restaurants. So we wanted to take a really hard look at that uh, employee base and the, uh, what's going on there and getting a feel for a baseline of what's happening in the restaurant uh, issues as well as stepping up some ways to improve uh, protection both for those employees as well as our uh, customers and others who may be visiting into the restaurant. So we put the order out, it's effective now as the 20th. It has a number of uh, steps to do in there and then I'll talk a bit about how we're trying to assist that. The first issue there was really to upgrade the personal protective equipment or PPE. You'll hear us refer to that uh, by that name. The requirement is to have a surgical mask versus the cloth face coverings for all employees. 
uh, or higher if you have an N95 or a higher level mask, but the minimum is a surgical mask. We believe those provide better uh, protection. Uh, they're generally good probably for a shift, maybe two, depending on what you're doing or how long, but uh, also, so what we're trying to do on that is making sure that we can assist restaurants on the front end if they need that, let us know. We have an ambassador team from the town going out to each restaurant, providing the information, uh, giving a copy of the order and walking through all of these requirements. And then asking if they need PPE, we will uh, provide that to them. Uh, also, uh, jump down to employee screening. That's to happen on site now, not self-verified by uh, an employee. Uh, we are providing thermometers if uh, restaurants need them and then actually providing a form they can utilize for signing in employees. That all goes to the effort of not having sick employees go to work. Uh, previous uh, health orders and direction from the state is to not have people who may be ill showing up at work. The other thing we really did to try to enhance and get a better baseline is testing. Uh, we are requiring 30% uh, or more of all of our restaurant employees kind of spread across the different types of categories in our restaurant uh, to be tested. Uh, we have set up a testing site at the Mammoth Lakes Community Center up on Forest Trail next to the village. Uh, so between 10 and 1, people can go there. Uh, it's free. There's no sign up, uh, show up, uh, stand in line and get through there. It goes pretty quick. Uh, the first day, I think we tested 144 people, and today it was over, over 100, 110 or so. Brian has a hard number there that we're able to move through that. So it, it gets through pretty quick, and so we'd like people to really uh, step up and do that. It gives us a good baseline. Uh, so as we ultimately come back with additional testing uh, capabilities, uh, the goal would be to pick that back up at some level so we can maintain uh, uh, the safety of our restaurant area that provides a key element of our economy and employment in support of both locals and visitors. Um, then employee education, we really want each business to take it seriously about walking through information to make sure that employees are up to date on uh, what we're doing, reviewing the requirements, reviewing PPE requirements, reviewing guidelines, cleaning standards, uh, all of those types of elements. And then also for our uh, dishwashers, this was required by the state was to have eye protection and we're asking that for the uh, kitchen staff and others in that area if we can get eye protection for them. A uh, real uh, positive step in terms of protection of uh, them catching uh, the COVID uh, virus. And then, of course, we're looking uh, if, if there's a violation of the order, and that can happen a couple of different ways. One would be uh, not following the front end work here of getting your employees tested and uh, making, letting us know that that's happened. We're looking at a couple of different ways that it can be verified. Uh, one will ultimately be on our portal system, but also hey, if, if we're just shipping stuff into our uh, ambassador team via email or dropping it off. We get a list of employees. We'll check that against those who uh, went through the testing and making sure that we have uh, adequate numbers going through there. And then the violations would be if, if, if this initial process is not done, then uh, there'd be a closure of the restaurant. As we go forward, if we uh, do a check on a restaurant, which uh, there will be some of that happening, and people are not wearing the proper PPE, or we are, that you have no documentation of doing the proper employee screening. Uh, those would probably be the two largest items we'd be looking at. And failure to do that would result in a 72 hour closure for a first violation, then increasing to a five day violation, then ongoing for any subsequent ones at a seven day closure. So it is something we're taking very seriously given the nature of uh, what we've seen happen in that uh, sector. Uh, we have uh, testing available uh, through the 28th. So it'll be again tomorrow, Friday, then Monday and Tuesday from 10 to 1. Other restaurants have sent people to Verily, uh, the drive through testing, which will be available, I believe, next Tuesday again. Uh, so that's another option for people to get them through there. Um, once they've been tested, unless they are ill, they can go back to work. Uh, we'll be waiting to get back results, hopefully uh, not 
too long a wait time there uh, to be able to have uh, that information back and be able to follow up as uh, needed with the various uh, local, local businesses. And a lot of that effort is how can we help as well to make sure all this goes well and smooth. And we've had a lot of questions over that. It's, so I'll go through some of those real quick, but it's free. Uh, there's no sign up, it's show up, be tested. Yes, you can go back after the test. Again, unless you're feeling ill, then you shouldn't be going back to work. Uh, we've given information for employee screening. We're giving information uh, for getting uh, PPE and those types of things. Anyway, we can help this go smoothly uh, and really provide an enhanced level of uh, safety and uh, well-being for our uh, restaurant employees and that piece of the hospitality segment of the community is a is very high priority for us. With that, I can... Uh, yeah, thank you, Dan. We'll, uh, we'll move on to um, Dr. Burrows, if you wanted to comment on the press release that Mammoth Hospital issued on July 20th. Thanks, Stu. You know, Stu, I was wondering if you could actually go back to the figure with the uh, graph with the red line of uh, case incidents. Thank you. That's the one. Um, this is kind of a scary figure. And I think if you look at the, the graph that is pretty flat for most of April and May and into June, uh, we were living in a bubble. So we were, we were looking at New York and, and, and hotspots like that. And we were thinking to ourselves, well, we're okay, we're shut down. And we patted ourselves on the back a lot. And we said, we've done an amazing job of containing this and preventing things from happening. We are now experiencing what New York experienced, not necessarily on the same level, but we opened everything up and we're seeing a rise in cases and we're seeing cases on a daily basis. Uh, I think uh, it's fair to say there's uh, a reasonable amount of panic out there. And I think that's also to be expected, but this has gotten very real for us here in Mono County, you know, it's a little isolated mountain town and this little county that seemingly should not have been affected like this because why would we be affected? Um, I think it's important for everyone to recognize that this is, this is a real thing now and all the talk about maybe it's not a big deal and I don't believe in it and I shouldn't wear a mask is, is something that everyone has to put aside. Um, please help us to, to keep it contained and, and do what you're supposed to do and, and we're all need to do it. Please wear, wear a mask, do your distancing, do your washing. Um, don't go out unnecessarily and, and let's get this curve flattened out again so we don't have to shut everything down more unnecessarily. Uh, if you go back to the press release now, Stu, so we do have a, a case that's in the hospital right now. I'm happy to report the good news is that that patient is slowly getting better, but this patient's been pretty sick and it's a slow course. It's not something I don't think anybody would want to have to uh, go through on their own. Um, I think that patient is representative of what is potentially out there. And what we are seeing as far as testing is concerned is a number of patients really in any age range, age range from 15 to 70, if not more, that are testing positive. And because of the contagious nature of this disease, the 15-year-old, the 18-year-old, the 25-year-old can spread it to the 70-year-old, the 75-year-old, the patients with additional medical conditions that put them at risk for having a very, very serious or severe and even life-threatening course. We are desperately trying to avoid that. The good news is that we have um, our plan in place. We've had it in place for a very long time. So we are prepared to deal with what's coming. But the more cases that come in, the more um, we tax our system as far as our ability to hospitalize patients, wear adequate protective gear, and be able to accommodate or take care of anyone else that's coming into the hospital. So uh, like Stu said at the beginning of this, when we say we're all in this together, this is not a rah, 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 we're in it together. This is, this is a sink or swim phenomenon for all of us. We are as good as our weakest link. And our weakest link is those of us that are not gonna follow the orders that are out there as far as wearing masks and distancing um, and behaving in the way they're supposed to. So think little things like wear a mask that covers both your nose and your mouth. That's critically important because this virus lives in your nose. 
So when you choose to wear a mask that just covers your mouth, you're exposing everybody to whatever's in your nose and the other way around. Um, we are as good as, as we are with behavior and the better we behave, the less likely we're gonna have critical mass where everything shuts down and we're gonna be in a situation where we're gonna have to make the decisions we don't wanna make. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Burrows. Um, we will just kind of wrap up the slides here. I've just got a few slides here. Uh, the Town Business Assistance Program will be opening up a second round of grant applications on Monday, July 27th. Uh, there's no limit now on the number of employees. It's just the business must have less than a million dollars in gross revenue. So look for that information coming from the town. Again, opens July 27th for its second round. A quick update, this is the Indian National Forest, latest information on roads, campgrounds, campgrounds open and closed. Uh, and again, just really want to, again, reiterate the uh, fire restrictions in effect. Uh, again, no campfires are permitted outside of developed recreation sites. And then our final slide, which is on each and every slide, is uh, the up-to-date information, local resource contact uh, list, um, short-term rentals, uh, town code compliance, the county code violation email, the emergency operations center is still up, still accepting calls, and the daily brief is now issued Tuesday and Friday. And again, we have websites in English and Spanish. And for any of these questions that you um, have this evening that you don't, you're not getting a sufficient answer on, please email us at covid19help at mono.ca.gov. Uh, and with that, I think we need to get to some questions. Brian, back to you. Sure. Before we uh, jump into the questions, I just wanted to uh, get a point of information out there. Our actual count is 102. We uh, picked up one case since you made the slides there, Stu. So I just wanted to make sure we were putting out the right information. All right. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of questions out there, so let's get into it. Um, Lauren, can we have our first question? There are a lot of number, there's a high number of people we see coming through Mammoth at any one time during the week slash weekend. Although the occupancy is only allowed to be 75% over the course of a week, this still allows hotels and lodging to be booked almost full over a weekend. The village, for example, showed 96% occupancy over the 4th of July weekend. Is there anything we can do to limit this, perhaps no more than a certain percentage at any given time, like one day? rather than out throughout the course of a week. Dan Holler, I believe uh, you can address that question. Yes, thank you. Uh, one element for July 4th, when we implemented the 75% factor, we did allow existing reservations that were in place prior to July, uh, June 19th, which is when we reopened lodging uh, to be honored. So there wasn't a lot of refund and conflicts and things of that nature. But given that we agree, the town has seen a substantial number of uh, visitors and we have been looking at options of how would we trim that back and uh, kind of dial that one back. Uh, we've looked at options that would be reducing the 75% number. Do you go to a daily or a different metric on that? We do not have a final answer on that. We do want to have some discussions with our lodging partners before we make a final decision there, but that is definitely an area of concern that has come forward uh, number of people in town and the impacts there. So it is definitely on the radar and something we'll be looking through very hardly over the next week or so or some options for consideration to bring forward. Thank you, Dan. Lauren, can we go to our next question? Are we trading summer tourists for winter skier visits by not shutting down our town right now? Uh, I'll, I'll all right, Dan. Again, uh, Brian, uh, we've had actually, we're starting a whole dialogue with Mammoth Mountain into this area as well. And I think really that concern, it's a valid one. If we have too much of an impact for the summer, what does that mean for winter? Uh, same concerns we have as walking into September, October, November before the mountain would be opening in a normal winter and looking at the impact through that season as well. I'll say Mammoth Mountain is doing a lot of preparatory work. Uh, they're in the middle of it is not just with Mammoth, but with all the Altera companies. Uh, the protocols that they wanna have in place and developed and they're uh, working through that, uh, they're not all done at this point, but I think they have a great plan in place that says, here's how we can keep people safe in a winter environment. 
of course, the question being how much travel, how much impact uh, do we want to see on the community? So we, we share the concern on what happens in the summer will impact the winter. What that relationship ship is right now is uh, difficult to judge, but again, it is, we share that concern and want to make sure that we don't trade off uh, a good summer for a loss of a winter. Thank you again, Dan. Lauren, can we have our next question, please? How do we get Vons to limit the number of patrons in the store at a single time? I was there just before five on Friday and it had six plus people per aisle. Chief Rebolt, would you like to answer this one? You're on mute, Chief. <laughs> 16 more months and I'll have this done. Uh, yeah, so obviously you've seen transitions in bonds in terms of uh, visual cues for people, um, as well as I know that the, uh, uh, the town's code enforcement group um, goes through various businesses in the town on a regular basis, and they're a little more frequent with uh, um, bonds and the grocery outlet. Um, one of the things that we benefit from here that we probably don't realize uh, is that it's uncommon for bonds to have a 24-hour cycle. Um, any ideas on closure would simply just increase the times when it was open. So we've had great success working with them um, on that portion. Uh, when we've gone through and done the, uh, uh, the visits, um, actually, the, even though we respond to the complaints, our, our, our visual experience is that the, uh, the masking is generally pretty good there. And as far as the six people in line, as long as they're spaced, um, that's, that's really what we're, what we're going for. Um, if we started to queue people up outside, we simply trade um, people being stacked up inside for people being uh, stacked up outside. So we've looked at those different options and uh, our strategy is to keep getting in there regularly, um, the code enforcement teams, um, and just trying to remind people about the basics that Dr. Burrow discussed, um, cover and distance. Thank you very much, Chief. Lauren, can we have our next question, please? Is testing happening in Colville Walker area and when people in North Mono County are tested in Nevada or at the Marine base, are those tests reported to Mono County? Dr. Boo, you were uh, speaking about that a little bit earlier. Would you like to elaborate? Yeah, sure. Um, well, you know, um, Verily has been, uh, you know, offering testing once a week, I think on Fridays in, in Antelope Valley for the last several weeks, but uh, lately no one's been coming. And so um, they're looking to, uh, um, offer their services elsewhere. So we're going to lose that. I mean, they, they, I think they basically had zero um, people coming in for testing the last couple of weeks. Um, I don't know that, I don't know if the Marine base is, is doing any testing themselves. I think initially they did not have that capacity. Brian might know if they do now, but as far as Northern Nevada, um, you know, we're actually looking at, you know, see if we can tell, um, how many people um, might be getting tests in Northern Nevada. And, and we're not quite sure whether all the hospitals that, you know, that might perform um, PCR testing up there um, report in the uh, state uh, um, laboratory data system for, um, for uh, you know, reportable communicable diseases. You know, we know, the, the, we know the big ones do, the state public health lab, but um, we're, we're pretty confident we get all the positives. Um, you know, people pick up the phone or, uh, you know, they send us secure faxes and or, um, you know, call us or, or, or both. Um, but as far as, you know, how many negative tests were done up there, um, we're, we're sort of trying to figure that out, but we don't think it's a huge number. Thanks, Dr. Boo. And yeah, in talking to the, the military base, they do still have, only have limited capacity the last I, um, I was informed, unfortunately. All right, Lauren, can we have our next question? Are the tests included in the positivity rate calculation only from the residents of Mono County or a test from anyone who enters the county and wants to be tested included as well? Brian, you could take that one. Okay, I mean, I, I'll yeah, turn sure. your mic off. But so the way it works with state reporting is that uh, the case is going to be accredited to your home county unless it can be proven that it was developed wherever you happen to visit. So if someone comes up from Orange County, for instance, um, takes a test here because they're not feeling well, you know, gets the results and it's a positive, 
um, it will be attributed to Orange County. However, if they were here for a prolonged period of time as a seasonal worker or um, you know, they, they can somehow prove that it was related to an outbreak here, then it would be attributed to us. Thanks, Sorry, Brian. And, 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 and Brian, we, we have had what, you know, a handful, yeah. you know, I don't know, maybe five or something, uh, you know, of uh, tests that were done here on people who, you know, presumably acquired the, uh, I mean, positive tests that, that presumably the um, infections were acquired elsewhere, either in um, seasonal workers who had just arrived and happened to get tested or, 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 um, or tourists. Yeah. That is correct, Dr. Boo. All right, Lauren, can we have our next question? Do you think we should be further limiting or even mandating the temporary closure of hotels, short-term rentals, and campgrounds in Mammoth Lakes in order to reduce the number of visitors to our town? So uh, I, I think Dan Holler sort of answered that question a little earlier, but I'll let him elaborate. Yeah, just, just on a hard closure, I think that answer would be no. Uh, part of that is just the economics of it, not just necessarily for the town, but for all the local businesses. And then the uh, ripple effects of that throughout uh, the county that would have overflow and impacts, it would uh, probably end up creating more problems for us from dispersed camping and things we can't control than it would be the benefit really related to uh, COVID-19 and the disease spread. Yeah, let, 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 let me add to that, Bill. I mean, um, you know, we are talking about um, additional restrictions, but not complete closures. Um, you know, um, we do think, I mean, I think very clearly the, you know, the more human beings you have in a, in a, in a you know, defined area like town, town of Mammoth Lakes and, and, and the surrounding area during an epidemic, the more opportunities there are going to be for, for new infections, the more transmission events you're, you're going to have, if you will. Um, you know, that's, that's, um, pretty um, basic logic there, um, and, and, I, and I'm sure that's part of it. Um, but, but the economic harms are, are real, as, as I'm sure some people on this call have experienced, experienced and certainly um, you know, many people in, in, in Mono County and California and the rest of the United States um, have, um, have experienced, and, and, and there are real public health um, effects of that too. Um, so, um, Trying to trying to strike some difficult balances, but but, but in my mind, um, when our contact tracing teams can can no longer keep up with the number of positive cases, and I and I just feel like we're losing control of the epidemic, or Dr. Burroughs, you know, and, and and his and his team at the hospital, um, you know, are, are are hitting their you know their um, you know um, yellow light thresholds, and 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 you know. Um, you know, it, 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 there's risk of not being able to take care of people. Yes, um, I, I, I would intend to act um, and, and do, you know, whatever is necessary to, to cut off the pipeline of, of tourists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Boo. Much appreciated. Lauren, can we have our next question? Can you tell us which restaurants are having employee COVID issues so the community can stay clear until all is well again? Also, what happens when uh, an employee tests positive? Does the business shut down? Yeah, hey, let, let me let me take that one too. So, so I wanted to, um, you know, um, add one thing to what you know, Dan, Dan uh, you know, was sharing, um, you know, the information about the, you know, um, the the majority, basically two thirds of our cases over the last uh, month, um, a little bit over a month, ha have been um, in restaurant employees or their contacts. But we really have um, no solid information um, that, that infections have been transmitted to customers of, of, um, of any restaurant. And um, most of the restaurants that are affected, I mean, safety measures are taken. Um, we would not let them operate if we thought there was, a, you know, once we know there's, a, there's disease, infection in a restaurant, some of them are shut for, for two weeks, some for less, but, you know, um, there, you know um, there's, there's, there's cleaning, there's testing of employees, there's isolation of, of those who are positive and quarantine of those who are exposed. And, 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 and we, um, yeah, we, we do our due diligence um, to, uh, to, to make sure that, uh, you know, any restaurant that, that we know to be exposed um, is, uh, um, you know, is safe by the time it reopens. And, 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 and you know, obviously, if, if, we, if we think that maybe there was some laxity in the, 
you know, in the adherence to the rules and stuff, we're going to be paying closer attention when those folks open up again. Um, you know, we're, we're going to be, uh, you know, dropping by um, more often and, and all that. So. All right. Again, thank you, Dr. Boo. Lauren, can we move on to the next question? Please observe the many customers at the outdoor seating food areas. The customers wander about in groups talking loudly without masks. The customers do not stay in their seat. They group onto others they do not know. The servers are exposed and the customers feel great getting to have an excuse not to wear a mask. Who is enforcing the masks? Chief Rebolt, can you uh, field that question for me? Uh, code enforcement of the uh, public orders, uh, in addition to any specific ones to the town or the county, um, we have uh, supported delegation of that to the code bodies in uh, Mono County and Town of Mammoth Lakes. And so, uh, as we said previously, the uh, we've spent months on the preparation for reopening. Um, we've used, uh, you know, an education supportive uh, approach. Um, the town and county managers uh, uh, committed to two hundred thousand dollars worth of PPE purchase that we've been distributing for two months now, uh, and it's ongoing, as you heard from uh, town manager Holler. Uh, in addition to addition, uh, in addition, uh, thermometers and some other screening tools to be out there. Um, so we're doing everything with everything we can on the positive side, um, but you've seen the numbers, they're rising rapidly. And so code enforcement is done at the local level. Um, and if need be, they can call on law enforcement if they, they need it. Um, that's been made clear, uh, but it's not one we can enforce our way out of. We need to, we need to convince people, as Dr. Burroughs said, uh, we've got to comply with this and we've got to influence others to comply with this. Thank you, Chief. Rob Patterson, would you like to add to that? Yeah, I could add just a little bit to that. Um, so the, the team that, uh, my team that's been going around or the town's team, uh, talking to businesses and making sure they're prepared uh, for the clients that come in, really looking more holistically is, is the establishment fully prepared for that? The question I think we heard earlier was just in specific how the patrons are acting once they're in the restaurant itself. And you know, we haven't gone to that point of, of really you know, mandating that they have everybody uh, remain seated, if you will, and, and, uh, and recommend that. I think um, that really kind of lands on the, on the business itself, um, who will be present there, the, the servers and such. And as, as my team goes around, we can certainly provide recommendations to be observant to that uh, and, and just be vigilant on it. But uh, as Chief Freeball said, that, it's really hard to, uh, to enforce our way out of that part of it. But the, the, uh, the businesses are open for education. They want to hear where problems have been solved, maybe problems that they face. Um, and so I think it's, uh, it, it's something we could definitely share. All right. Thank you so much, Rob. Lauren, can we have our next question? What are we doing about all the dispersed campers leaving trash and fires along the scenic loop? Uh, Chief, can you, uh, can you field that one? Um, as we receive complaints on those items, if they do come to us, I've, you know, we heard more of them before the seasonal help for the, our federal cooperators arrived. Um, but the area you're talking about, primarily campgrounds and, uh, oversight there goes to our federal partners. So, uh, I'm not sure the origin of, of the, the question exactly in terms of if they've lodged a complaint with the Forest Service or one to local government, uh, but the EOC line is still um, open. And you also have an email uh, way to reach us on the website. Uh, when those are received, we then redirect those to the agency that would have oversight and for the mammoth loops that would be primarily the Forest Service. Sheriff Braun, I see you would like to add to the conversation. The floor is all yours. So also law enforcement, local law enforcement uh, works with our federal partners on providing law enforcement in those areas. So town of Mammoth Lakes or Mono County Sheriff's Office, depending on whether it's in town or out of town, we'll also respond and advise people. We do it regularly on illegal fires. There is a fire restriction. Nobody's supposed to be having a fire. We have gone out and made people pick up trash. We have picked up trash ourselves. 
and we will report it to the Forest Service. It should be reported directly to the Forest Service, but if you have an active ongoing situation, especially a fire, call 911 and let us know, and we will get somebody out there and admonish them. They generally don't realize that they're not supposed to have a fire. They're camping. Let's have a fire. We want to make s'mores. Uh, and let them know that that's not acceptable, and they People have been very cooperative in putting out their fires and cleaning up their trash. So just let us know and we will get on it. Thank you, Sheriff Brown. Lauren, do we have any call-in questions today? We do. Our first call-in caller is Joe. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Joe. Hi, Joe, you're still on mute. Joe, can you unmute yourself? Okay, let's go to our next caller. Um, our next caller is Derek. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Derek. Hi, Derek, how are you tonight? You're still on mute. Sorry about that, my question was answered. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, Lauren, I guess we move to our next question. Um, we have another call-in question. It's a Joe, go ahead and unmute yourself. Joe, are you there? Joe, you're still on mute. Okay. And our next call in caller is Chana. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, Chana. Hi, uh, how are you guys doing? Good. How are you tonight? Uh, my question is. No, I'm just trying to figure out this uh, situation. Um, my question is, since uh, the town of Mammoth Lakes takes in TBID, will TBID be used to help restaurant owners pay for the advanced PPE? Um, Rob or... Hello? Or... Don't go in there. Rob, are you able to? Uh, yeah, I can, I can take that. Um, I think it Hello? captured most of the question. Um, <clears throat> so TBID does not actually belong to the town. That's, a, that's uh, collected, it's collected by the town, passed through to MLT. Um, it actually belongs to the Association of Businesses. Um, so unlikely that will be utilized to support that. The town does have a business assistance program um, that we are, that we have stood up Recently, it's currently going through uh, $300,000 was allocated to that program. Um, there's certain parameters for that, um, but people can apply for assistance um, in, in keeping their businesses open. There's several requirements that are associated with that. If anybody wants to know more details can certainly reach out to the town and we walk through um, the parameters of that program. Yeah, and, and thanks, Rob. And, and, and I think the caller um, referred specifically to the cost of PPE. And, and at least for now, um, the, the town county EOC um, is uh, actively providing um, surgical face masks um, to uh, to rest. That one. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Boo. Uh, can we have our next question, Lauren? Our next caller is Monica. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Monica. Hi, Monica. How are you tonight? Hi, thank you for taking my call. Um, you know, our Latino community has been disproportionately affected um, from the beginning. I know the county was caught a little off guard in the beginning and worked really hard to get, get things better. But now we're seeing it again with this, this return of the virus in our community. So I'm wondering what more are we doing to protect these members of our community, our neighbors? Um, how are we keeping them safe? What, what more can we do? What, what is the county planning on doing? Um, Dr. Boo, would you like to uh, take a crack at that question for me, please? 
Yeah, um, that's a it's a great question. Um, and an important one, and I, you know, I, I don't feel like my my answers or our response are are, are um, really adequate. I mean, you know, we, we we certainly make efforts to you know to 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 do everything um, in in English and Spanish. And, and first off, I, I do endorse that that the, um, the disproportionate impact of, of of you know Latinx people um, and people identify as Hispanic is I mean it, it's extreme. I mean, a, a, a very large majority of of, of, of positive cases last month have been um, um, people who, who um, self-identify as Hispanic. Um, and I think there are some things that, that, that you know, um, you know um, we can continue to try to address through education information. Um, and, and there's other things that are just um, societal and economic and, 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 and really bold. I believe Governor Newsom is gonna be talking about some of these challenges statewide tomorrow and and, and you know um you, so, so i think the whole state is, is is thinking about some of these challenges um but uh you know with the cost of, of housing in california and town of mammoth lakes um sometimes we find that uh, the people um with um you know um with, with, with positive COVID 19 um tests and, and, and illness um are are living in um um in, 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 in places where it, it's really hard to isolate, um, you know, to stay away from people. And, and we do and have, we, we have been, and, and we do have the ability to, to um, encourage um, people that we find in crowded living situations to, um, uh, we can shelter them in local hotels, um, you know, either shelter the case or shelter higher risk members of the household. You know, and I think that's, that's important, and we and we and we we always offer that. You know, I, when I spoke to the restaurant owners um, that, that the chamber assembled this morning, um, like this via Zoom, um, you, you know, I, I conveyed to them that that some of our bilingual staff um, believe that uh, you, you know every 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 community and and and, and subsection ethnic um, part of, of of any community is heterogeneous, right? I mean, you know, um, every there, there's individuals and variation. People are different. And, and um, you know, right after this, we're going to have a Spanish version of, of, of this meeting. And, you know, there'll be, a, a, you know, a modest number of people on there who are really interested and really concerned and want to know what they, you know, can uh, can do to, to stay safe. But there are other people who like people in the non-Hispanic community who are um, kind of blowing off the pick. And, and, and so um, uh, going back to, you know, um, some of our bilingual staff have advised that that maybe the bosses, the owners, you know, might be more effective, um, you know, um, um, in, in con convincing or conveying to to um, some of their workers who are clearly a, this is serious. That that if we all all don't, you know, um, you know. You know um, Say no to the invite for the you know for the neighborhood barbecue and, and and try to even avoid gathering with you know members of your of your household of your family your relatives that are outside your own household, you know um, for now, you know for the time being, um, you know cover your face when you go all, all those simple things um, that that many people's jobs are in jeopardy the economy is in jeopardy the you know the the the, the well being of the community is um, in, in jeopardy so so um, yeah I think we just got to um, kind of keep. Uh, Keep brainstorming and talking to people and, and, and looking for additional resources. And I was thinking today, maybe we can, you know, um, you know, get some of our, um, you know, our nonprofit organizations that, you know, that uh, work the most with, uh, you know, lower income people and um, people of other, um, you know, language groups, um, you know, um, more involved. I mean, your Imacas and, 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 you know, wild irises and, and, and things like that, Catholic Church. Anyway, so, um, um, it, it needs further discussion um, locally and, and statewide. It's, it's a big challenge. All right. Thank you, Dr. Boo. Um, we have time for one or two more questions, but before we go there, I just want to remind everyone that if your question doesn't get answered tonight, or if you have a question you'd like to ask, you can certainly email us at covid19help at mono.ca.gov. And again, that's COVID19help at mono.ca.gov. Lauren, can we have our next question? 
If 65% of new cases are linked to restaurants, why are restaurants staying open while extremely hygienic, low-risk establishments are being closed? Has there been any connection between positive cases due to personal care services? Dr. Boo, can you uh, field this question? We've had this discussion between us. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, um, the, the, the closure of um, purchase is, um, it's, uh, it, it's not our to say, you know, the, uh, the, um, to Arden Lake, um, um, Dr. Boo, you're breaking up really bad. The, the people in, in, I'm glad that they, you know the haircut or about the option of, of 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 moving outside um okay well i i don't know how you're I, we can hear you now, else can here now. okay it, it, it's a state directive it's not it's not ours and, and we don't think the closure of the of the personal services is going to you know make a big difference in the problem we have in mono county in the town of mammoth lakes um i'm i'm, I'm glad that at least that the people that cut hair are given the option of, of moving outside if that's feasible for them. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I regret the, uh, you know, the, the additional hardship for, you know, for other um, people who are trying hard to do the, do the right thing. Thank you, Dr. Boo. Yes, it's definitely a tough situation all around. Lauren, can we have one more question, please? Hey, Brian, can I add just something to the last one? Absolutely, Rob. Um, you know, one of the elements, so indoor dining was closed in advance of this um, process. And I think if you think about it as what's <clears throat> what needs to be inside the building, um, that's probably going to be the biggest area. So, yes, I know shopping and other things are inside of the building, but they're sort of in and out um, and a little bit more transient than if you're in there for a particular service or if you're in there for a workout. And so... Um, restaurants were closed in advance of that to, uh, to, to indoor dining. And so I think it's just, it's just a matter of, uh, Dr. Booth said, the way the state lined up through what seemed to be logical in limiting the exposure. Thank you, Rob. Lauren, can we have a next question, please? The cases are worse now than in March when we shut down the town and have these meetings every week. Can we have these meetings every week again? Chief Rebold, I'm gonna ask you to uh, address that question. No, it's a great question. That's exactly why we're having a meeting now. When we saw the uh, uh, spikes start up, uh, you wouldn't know, but uh, the cadence to the EOC operations, uh, our meetings, this meeting um, are gonna, uh, they're, they're kicking back up to reflect um, current case activity. So I don't know that we're back to two week, uh, two meetings um, a week, but I know that we're starting to go with the one uh, at least, and we'll go more frequently if needed. Thank you, Chief Revo. And it looks like, Lauren, we have time for one more question. If we're at this meeting, you're probably preaching to the choir about the importance of COVID safety. You need to be engaging people on the streets walking around without a mask. Can Mono County ticket people to put some teeth into enforcement? Chief Freebolt and, and, and Sheriff Braun. I, I will let the um, young lady with, with uh, the badge of Sheriff answer that question. <laughs> All right. So we certainly do have the authority. It does have the uh, the effect of a criminal charge to not wear a mask in public it's we liken it to not wearing a seat belt you know we don't catch everybody who's not wearing a seat belt but it is a law that you should wear a seat belt it's for your own good that you wear a seat belt so we can uh certainly cite people for not wearing a mask i don't think that's effective it's like public shaming it's better to approach them remind them of the responsibility and encourage them to voluntarily comply now, if somebody becomes aggressively non-compliant and they don't meet the exemptions, for example, there are people who have uh, health issues where they can't wear a mask and they are exempt from the state's order or small children or while you're eating, or if you're socially distant, if you're out for a run and you're running by yourself, you don't have to wear a mask. So uh, we try to go with education and voluntary compliance. And, and if somebody is aggressively non-compliant, then they would be cited. But we haven't gotten to that point yet. 
and we we really are uh, complaint based on this. We are not going around looking for people not wearing masks. That we are not the mask police. That we have a lot of other things to do with our time, and uh, it really is going to be situationally based. Thank you, Sheriff Ron, and I want to thank all of my panelists. Uh, we've run out of time for this evening, so until we see each other again, take care of each other and yourself, and good night, Mono County.